when um, things happen in your life, uh, in the theater of your life, um, the character has to deal with them and look at himself while, um, while dealing with them. And so by doing that, um, the character will eventually come to a point where uh, it realizes, well, um, this is no longer suitable. This personality, persona, personality, this character is no longer suitable. So it leaves the stage. This is in a, a healthy environment. It leaves the stage and the new version of a, a, a character is uh, brought forth to, to that stage. The issue is that uh, a character um, is, even, even though it is mental, a mental entity uh, is uh, alive. It gains a life of its own through our essence. And so what happens is that uh, if it's alive and if it realizes it is alive, uh, it doesn't want to leave, it doesn't want to dissolve, it doesn't want to, let's say, die, okay? Mm -hmm. So it goes into survival mode. And survival mode uh, uh, makes it try to, to fool the ego and to fool the soul and to fool even the essence and to continue uh, the, the, the status where it can exist, where it can survive. Um, the easiest and the best way would be to just accept death. But uh, I'm sure, Luke, that uh, um, you realize that if you're faced with a situation where your death is imminent, you will um, go into survival mode and you will do whatever. Um, uh, you will be at least feeling the urge to do whatever but, to but survive. you know what's interesting about that uh, but mm -hmm. that in situations like like that uh, the mind like stops i i, I had some um, mm -hmm. situations when i was you know facing even death and uh, sort of the thinking mechanism stops you have you you are you are relying on your instincts and some some it's some sometimes like time slows down and you ha you yes. are in this flow state and it's kind of you know, it's kind of different than, than your normal day-to-day -day existence. Yeah? Yes, that's true. Yes. And, and the character uh, tries to put the mind into that state so that it can maintain control. So the control is inverted. Instead of the essence controlling uh, uh, the ego and the ego performing the character, and if that would be the case when the character needed to leave, it would just simply leave to make way for the new character to be played by the actor of the ego. It is an inverted control. So the character controls the ego and therefore, therefore controls the, the essence. And uh, uh, the way to do that, the way that the character found the characters, um, I'm talking individually, but you can uh, make it a plural, uh, found to, to control is to uh, maintain the situation where they are viable, where they are needed. Uh, where uh, a certain uh, um, aspects of personality uh, are more valued than, than others. And if they, they would simply um, accept leaving the stage, simply accept being dissolved and uh, understood that their time has, um, has come, their time in the sense of uh, as being a character, it doesn't mean actual death, uh, as you understand, but um, mm -hmm. uh, that the mental construct um, time has has come uh, then a new version of them would simply um, would simply come and and take the stage but this is uh, the fear of death and uh, the fear of dissolution and um, so the the theater of the world plays out in um, in two different ways at an individual level uh, you are um, performing your characters and looking at yourself and gradually, it should be that way, gradually knowing yourself better through reflections on the mirror, through shadows um, and so on and so forth. I talk about that in, in my channel. But um, there is an inverted um, uh, situation as well where the world itself and which is ruled by characters that have uh, been stuck in um, 
in uh, survival in, in the sense of they want to continue existing as they are, um, trying to impose um, the, uh, a worldview and a situation where they are still needed, they are still viable. Um, and so it, if you uh, uh, look at a, a world from a mainstream uh, point of view, you will realize, if you observe yourself, that that is reinforcing a certain type of character that is probably no longer, um, no longer viable, except if you follow that worldview, right? If you follow that worldview, then this character is viable. Mm -hmm. And if you are, uh, uh, if you want to continue being that character, if you don't want to change your personality um, in that sense, then you will uh, embrace the mainstream view or even the alternative um, views that still reinforce the the main uh, the main situ the pivotal situation of whatever is uh, is being discussed so it is it is a matter of uh, inverted control in the sense that uh, for the character to still be pertinent you have to change the stage and change the 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 props and the scenario uh, where the the drama is being played out and you are basically telling the essence, see, um, I'm still needed. Um, this, this, um, this way of existence is still necessary and it's still um, what needs to, 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 to be there um, when it's actually the other way around. Um, it is no longer uh, needed and um, it has to go. Um, the characters that, that, that saw that and identified with that um, their time has long passed, uh, and they're just in survival mode, just delaying the inevitable. In my in my view, yeah. I don't know if I answered your question well, but yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you because I mm. I, I don't usually make notes, but I had a, a note that was uh, saying uh, from I remember from the early uh, contemplations you did, you mentioned. Mm. Uh, the simulated interactive nature uh, describing mm -hmm. this reality as <laughs> as that and yeah. that uh, there is the real part of the human which interacts via uh, ego if i understood con if mm -hmm. i if i remember correctly so and you also mentioned that life probably uh, that's what i remember goes in, in cycles and uh, there is uh, better times worse times and it's all to keep the character invested in the game so uh, if i don't know if, if if my understanding is correct but i i think you 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 imply or you maybe even say say it directly that there is the real essence of the human which just involves in this virtual reality kind of game simulation if you are, if you will yeah. and uh, and that's all all that we see is sort of a fake uh, um, illusory kind of mm -hmm. you know simulated reality if that's if that uh, is correct can you cal clarify that yes well the the essence knows it is uh, it is a, 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 an illusory reality and uh, it voluntarily uh, went into the illusory uh, reality, in my view, um, with the purpose of knowing itself. And uh, when I say this is, um, imagine if you can, um, a being that is, um, uh, that has its own, uh, uh, that has no needs, so it is self-sufficient and um, it has um, everything uh, um, it needs so it, it just exists but it doesn't know and especially it doesn't know about itself so mm -hmm. it just is but doesn't know okay so the way to know is to uh, co-create um, an illusory um, setting where it can look at itself from different points of view look at its own potentials so I have the potential to be the victim. I have the potential to be the, the, the criminal. I have the potential to be this. I have the potential to be that. And um, by looking at all those potentials, it knows when it comes back, 
um, to its original state, which it will always come back to, to its original state. Time is um, part of that illusion. Um, it's, uh, it no longer just is, but it is and knows that it is and knows what it is. Uh, so it returns to a state of innocence, innocence in the sense that uh, it's, uh, it's no longer um, um, participating in that illusory reality, but with the knowledge of who it is, knowledge of what, what is its own nature, what is its own um, essence. Um, and so uh, it's, uh, it becomes uh, a wise kind of innocence. And that is, I think, the, the, the purpose of it. That's why we are, um, we are, we are here. And this is my view. I, I remember um, um, a scene from one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's called The Frame. Um, I don't know if you've watched it, but no, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't yeah. usually watch movies, and this title, even uh, I, if you mention it, I don't even recall if I ever know about what it is about so so no <laughs> sorry yes it, it's a very interesting movie it's a low budget movie uh, it's not very well known but um, it's uh, it's very interesting and there's a scene there um, where um, one of the the characters say um, uh, I know that you're angry for all that you've had to do um, but that's why um, God tests us. God tests us so that we can look through God's eyes and see what he sees. So in the sense, um, it is, uh, if you imply that God is the essence, um, you go through the illusory um, reality to be able to look at yourself through the eyes of the essence and know uh, uh, what it is and realize that that is a potential of the um, of the whole of the the whole essence a potential of God if you would like to put it like that so that's what when the analogy of mirrors comes in right so uh, correct yeah okay. yeah yeah because the mirror uh, the, the the reality will always mirror back the potentials that are refused um, for example if you would if you were to say that um, if you follow uh, the duality kind of um, aspect of, of God. So let's say one, on one side you have God, on the other you have the devil, okay? Um, God is uh, proud and uses shame, right? Uh, God will refuse anything that isn't um, um, uh, strengthening its own pride. And so it uses shame if anything is outside of its pride. The devil on the other side is shameful and uses pride to go against uh, uh, the pride of God, to, to shame God, right? To try to shame God. And if you look at, at this duality, which is uh, um, obviously one of the narratives along the, the illusory reality, um, if you look at it, it's, uh, it's basically... Um, uh, showing you that uh, uh, if a part of you is refusing something on the other side and casting it away to hell, let's say, which would be the uh, un unconscious, subconscious um, types of, of, um, of mental existence, then that will come back to haunt you and it will come back to try to shame you. Because the issue is that your self-image is uh, uh, based on a pride of uh, uh, um, uh, an existence that isn't the full potential of who you are. And the full potential of who, who you are includes um, the stuff that you like to look at and the stuff that you don't like to look at. You know, we all have potentials that we really don't like. We all, we all have uh, traits and and um, and situations where we know that uh, it's shameful for some reason, right? It shames us, and while it sh it shames us, we cast it to the subconscious. We sort of repress it, 